Now let's understand that when exactly we need to write down Apex code, right? This is very important that uh, while working as a Salesforce developer, what are the situations in which we have to write down Apex? So here are some. So to perform a complex uh, business process, which is not, uh, which are not uh, supported by workflows or process or flows, uh, these workflows, process or flows is nothing but point and click tools available into Salesforce with the help of which you can actually, uh, yeah, write, create a cre uh, create a process or yeah, create a business process, or cre write down some some logic and do some activities related to it, like yeah, different different activities. I, I guess you know about it if you have already under. If you've already learned Salesforce admin, uh, which is actually important in order to be a Salesforce developer. But anyways, coming back to this. So if you want to write down a complex business process, which is not possible to be created with the help of point and click tools, then in this situation, you need to write down Apex. There's no other solution out of it. There might be some, but most of the time, it's, it's always recommended to use Apex rather than using something else, uh, which I guess you, you should just skip right now. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on to the next point, to perform complex validations over multiple objects. So you, have, you must have already learned about validation rules. Uh, they help us uh, create some conditions or write down some conditions uh, to make sure that the data which is being entered by the user uh, should meet certain criteria. And uh, if you want to create like a validation rule which requires multiple objects which might be or might not be related to each other, then in that case, you need to write down Apex and preferably triggers in Apex, uh, which we'll learn in triggers again. But yeah, it, it, this is a, another situation in which you need to write down Apex. Another thing, to create web services and email services. So if you need to create a web service with the help of which you want to connect uh, another system with Salesforce, then in that case, you'll have to write down Apex. Uh, to create an email service as well, uh, you'll have to do the same thing, write down Apex. Next is for transactions and rollbacks, if you want to like, put a situation like this in which uh, you want to implement the transaction and rollback um, functionality, then you need to write down Apex. And for whatever thing you, uh, so like if, if there's something that you want to implement and you're not able to do that with the help of the point and click tools available into Salesforce platform, then all what you have got right now to implement that is uh, Apex, right? So you have to move on to coding, right? So yeah, I mean, in all of these situations, you have to uh, write down Apex. And you must be thinking that, why not I should write down all of the things into Apex itself? It's not at all recommended, and it's not appreciatable. Uh, that's the best thing that I can say right now. But uh, if you want to uh, implement a solution for a particular problem, and if that is something that which is possible with the help of point and click tools, please, please, please implement it with the help of point and click tools. Do not go for coding.